The debate about Starfield and whether or not it is a shooter or just an RPG has been a debate that I've been sort of entertaining for a while. Ever since the first footage of Starfield gameplay emerged, there were concerns about the shooting. Some of us observed in that very, very first premiere in 2022 that the shooting looked a little stiff or not impactful, kind of like the shooting that we experienced in Fallout 4. And that was always kind of the thought is that maybe this would be more of an RPG and less of a shooting. But if you really watch that original premiere, they showcased a lot of skills and systems that center around the guns and the shooting. So I was I remember debating with people saying this is a shooter and that's a huge, huge aspect of the game and its combat and the systems and skills and the things that you'll be investing in. And we have an article from the gamer that I want to react to that says Starfield looks like the best shooter Bethesda has ever made. And when they did the Starfield Direct my entire you know opinion about the game's shooting changed I felt like we were looking at a completely different game, and they seemingly invested a lot in really changing the way that the guns feel. The movement was more snappy, the guns, the recoil, the sounds, the impact on the enemies. It really looked like a good shooter, and I I said that in my initial reaction to the Starfield Direct. I said, it doesn't look like they just set out to make a good RPG, but it does seem they spent a lot of time building what looks like a very good shooter, and I think that's incredibly important, and yes, that is relevant to the 30 versus 60 FPS debate. I don't want to have that debate right now. The game is so compelling. I'm looking into getting a very beefy gaming PC. I want something that I can kind of throw Starfield at and get good, consistent performance because it's such a compelling game. It seems like such an amazing game that I don't want to miss out because it is difficult to play games at that lower frame rate when you're not used to it. And that's just how good this game looks. And one of the things that really grabbed my attention was the shooting, which with the systems in place to edit your guns and customize them and all the potential different types of guns that we may be able to find out out in the world. I hope it's a very expansive system. I hope that they've really put a lot of work into it and make it a compelling investment of your time, something to really, you know, dig down deep into. So, Let's see what the gamer is saying here. Starfield looks like the best shooter Bethesda has ever made. Action has never been Bethesda's strong suit, but it looks like that may be changing with Starfield. Now, we heard that id Software, the guys behind Doom, helped them out, but apparently that was with graphics. I thought when we saw the update to the shooting and the feeling and everything, I thought for certain, I was like, oh, id Software must have really helped them. They're, you know, they're the shooter geniuses out there. So let's see what they have to say. Bethesda has never been the best at developing satisfying gunplay. Each time I've picked up Skyrim on console, I've constantly wished I was playing on PC instead so I could find a mod, any mod, to make its combat more tolerable. The Fallout series is slightly better on this front because its VAT system allows you to slow down time and target specific body parts on your enemies, view your percentage chance to do damage, then watch as the bullets fly through your opponent in grisly slow motion. I've actually had people say that they feel that's really the only way to tolerate the gunplay in Fallout is to just use the VAT system all of the time. It almost sort of masks and hides just how not great the shooting feels. I remember I remember investing heavily in my guns in Fallout 4, and I really liked that, but I never really felt like the guns landed. They never felt crisp or good or tight or responsive. Everything felt very flat, loose, not impactful. And so, obviously, seeing some of those systems make their way into Starfield with editing your gun, the attachments, and all the stats and everything, that's going to be something that you want to feel that impact when you take a gun up a notch you make it better you really take the time to invest in it and if you're spending skill points that help certain gun types you also want to see that met out in the gameplay not just in the stats or the numbers fallout may be better they continue but neither series is known for its visceral gunplay or bow play or magic staff play id and bethesda game studios may be under the same corporate umbrella but these games are as far from doom as you can get without leaving the first person perspective and I, I i do think when you're going up against doom and other great shooters in the market whether you go back as far as titanfall 2 apex legends destiny these are games with amazing gunplay they just feel solid to play 
a game to keep your eye on that I think has some of the best gunplay we've seen to date. I don't know if it's going to feel as good as it looks, but typically I've been playing shooters since the very first shooters were ever made. I feel like I can pretty much pinpoint if a game is going to feel good or not, and Witchfire looks really impressive, so keep your eye on that one. Even if you're not a fan of Rogues, I think that game's going to offer a really fun loop, and part of that's going to be that satisfying gunplay. Which is why, they state here, while watching Bethesda's lengthy Starfield Direct last month, I breathed a sigh of relief. The gunplay looks good. Not just good for Bethesda, but actually good. I agree with this. That's why I said it's it's not just looking like a great RPG, it's looking like a good shooter. That is super important. I know everybody was trying to hand wave the 30 FPS, 60 FPS. They were sort of preemptively doing this. I had a lot of people coming to Starfield's defense. I think they anticipated it was going to be 30 FPS. I made a very strong case after the Lex Friedman interview. I said the only game that Todd Howard could be talking about is Starfield because they wouldn't have been entertaining a 30 versus 60 FPS discussion in those old games. That really wasn't a a big thing back then. So I was like, the only game he could be talking about is Starfield. And I had a lot of people agree and concede. They're like, yeah, he probably is talking about Starfield. And then I had folks say, it's not really a big deal. It's not a shooter. It's an RPG. I really, really beg to differ, especially after the Starfield Direct, to try to claim this game is not a shooter is ludicrous. I mean, just the jet packing around and the the switching from third person to first person, it very much is a game that's rooting its combat around shooting guns, and it was good to see those big improvements in the gameplay. If I saw some of the antics this game lets you get up to in a dedicated first person shooter, I would still be excited to strap on a jetpack and get to work. Let's continue. The presentation managed the all-important task of making it seem like it will be viscerally fun to fire its guns and equally fun to maneuver around your opponents. This is a good way of phrasing it. I think that's kind of what I've been getting at. Like, you want the guns to have an impact on the enemies, and and that was that, that early gameplay just wasn't doing that. It looked like you weren't even shooting them. They weren't really responding. And again, just... (laughs) accuracy of guns sometimes can have an effect i know early on they may want to give you weapons and guns that are really inaccurate so as you level up and invest you see that accuracy increase but when the bullets are just almost like spraying in weird and awkward directions and trajectories it makes it look really loose and not tight and crisp and enjoyable so you got to be careful with that in an RPG where the guns will subsequently get better as you level and invest in them. I I think that is going to be a challenge for Starfield, at least in the early game. That isn't why most players will buy this game, but it will certainly make it more enjoyable while getting from place to place. I don't know if I agree with that. I think a lot of people are going to buy this game because it's a space RPG shooter. Like, it's got guns. I mean, they they don't ever not show lots of guns and gunplay. So I, I think a lot of people are buying it for the fact that it's a shooter. People like that aspect. If this game was all about, you know, melee and spell casting or something i think a lot of people would skip it they would say oh no thank you but when there's guns in there man a lot of people will scoop up your game and give it a try the guns look responsive and the enemies can take a few hits but they aren't bullet sponges when the player boards the ship to take out its crew on foot each enemy goes down fairly quickly and the guns have an immediacy that fallouts lacked even out of vats introducing spaceships as a new kind of bandit camp is an exciting wrinkle because instead of looting them you can add them to your fleet that was something that a lot of people celebrated that you can literally board a ship take it over and then add it to your fleet that one surprised me i didn't actually think starfield was going to have that level of depth mainly because not depth i didn't think breadth would be there with your fleet or your ships because in my mind the ship was an extension of the player almost like it's part of your arsenal it's part of your skill tree so it is interesting that we're going to be able to have multiple ships That kind of gives me hope for the future, that they're sort of willing to do lateral expansion of your existence in the game with many other possibilities. Recently, we were discussing the possibility of there being land vehicles added later, and you could have almost a garage where you build them and customize them the same way that they let you do with your ships. That could be pretty fun, and that could be another great system to invest in as a player 
especially when you're going on different runs, different planets, and scavenging, and you know, just trying to get resources. That could be something they decide to add later. In the same vein of you've got all these different ships, you could have an entire fleet of different vehicles that are, you know, they have different purposes and benefits. Maybe some are built for combat. Maybe some are built for hauling lots of resources. It could really, I think, add to the depth of the game. Most importantly, the game has a jetpack, and better yet, a dedicated jetpack that you can upgrade over the course of a playthrough. I'm a big fan of the acrobatic combat in games like Titanfall 2, Doom Eternal, and Neon White, and while Starfield almost certainly won't feel quite as good as those master classes in kineticism, the jetpack looks like it will add a few new twists to the encounters. Well, and I think that's an important thing to point out, is that Starfield is a shooter but it's not just a shooter i think that might get lost in some of the commentary you know i can already imagine people have run to the comments on this video and be like okay but it's more than a shooter it's a it's a shooter and an rpg it's a shooter and a space exploration game with space combat and all of this i i will concede that you you are correct in saying that if you're saying that yes it's more than a shooter and I think that is important to remember because it's more than a shooter it doesn't necessarily need to rival Doom Eternal or Titanfall 2 right that's not necessary however if you're too far below that standard of quality I think that will stand out in these days there are so many good games out There are so many really good shooters out there. If your game has guns in it, and I can play third person or first person, doesn't matter, and it doesn't feel very good, that's going to stand out. Even if it's not the primary means of everything that you're doing, that will be a knock against the game. So I am pleased at seeing the marked improvement from the very first Starfield reveal to the Starfield Direct. Hopefully even between the Starfield Direct and the Starfield release date, we see even more sort of tightening things down with respect to the shooting. Because it's a huge aspect of the game. Being able to fire a few shots from cover, then pop out, fly overhead, and land behind the enemy for the kill is something I don't foresee myself getting tired of for a long, long time. I'll, I'll agree with those segments being something that I was like, hey, I, I want to do that. Because in the first premiere, it was like, okay, he kind of jetpacked over a, a, a chasm and then just landed and kind of shot everybody. But there was a lot more creativity, a lot, no, a lot more just good use of the verticality in the footage that we saw. We also saw enemies at varying positions, so it's not just going to be that classic. Everybody's kind of on the ground, hiding behind boxes, and you're sort of waiting for them to pop out. There were ladders, there were there were ramps, there were different uh, levels to it, right? There was that there was a verticality to the to the layouts. And I remember in Fallout 4 going through some of the bases where there would be like almost like winding staircases and balconies and stuff where they could shoot down on you and I could imagine that being something that's really enjoyable clearing an area or navigating an area but being able to jetpack around I think will add to some of that freedom that I, I again am excited for this game it's one of my most anticipated games this year and the uh, the combat and the shooting definitely sold me Part of the trouble with judging combat in a game you haven't played is that you can't evaluate how it actually feels. Starfield might be slightly off, and I wouldn't be able to tell from looking at a capture. I need to actually play it. But if the combat feels as good as it looks, it's stacking up to be Bethesda's best shooter yet. I want to talk about that here at the end. I actually do think we've hit a point where... I can look at gameplay and get a pretty strong approximation of what it's going to feel like. And a great example of this is Redfall. I said very early on that something was off. I did a stream. I said something's off with Redfall. Something doesn't look right. And then I really analyzed it and and combed over the footage. And I was like, this just looks bad. And I pinpointed all of the reasons that it looked bad. I studied the montage of all things. And you could just see things that were absent. You could see enemies not responding to being shot. You could see enemies not really responding or shooting back. There was just this lack of intensity. And I said, I actually defended the IGN footage. I said, yeah, they were playing rather poorly, but it exposed other problems. It exposed the enemy acting incredibly dumb. It exposed the enemy not responding to gunshots. And that's why I mentioned Witchfire in this video, because I can watch that footage and tell those guns look really crisp and responsive. I can see them landing shots. You can watch people play 
t- Destiny 2. You can watch people play Apex, and you can tell the guns are tight and responsive. You can watch people right now play Redfall, and you can tell the gunplay is not that strong. And you can look at the very first Starfield reveal and the gunplay in that, and then look at the gunplay in the latest footage, and there's marked differences. There's all sorts of little things you can use to pinpoint, is this a shooting system, a gunplay system that's been tightened down? Does it have that good feel? Is it crisp? Is it giving the player good feedback from the recoil to the muzzle flare to the sound? to the way the bullet's trajectory travels, to the way the enemies respond to being shot. These are all visual cues to the quality of gunplay in a game. And so I actually think we can look at the Starfield footage and say that looks like it's going to feel pretty good. Yes, the proof is always in the pudding. You can always be a little tricked by gameplay. You can always watch gameplay and think, that looks amazing, and then it's not quite as good as when it lands. And obviously that would be a huge disappointment if that alone is lacking or not polished or doesn't feel good, it will significantly hurt Starfield in my book because it is, at its core, an RPG, yes, but it's got multiple cores in my mind, right? This is like a spaceship with multiple cores, okay? At its central core, yes, it's an RPG, but a huge extension to that is guns, shooting, making the weapons, crafting them, investing in your skill tree to make the guns more impactful. It's a shooter, right there along with being an RPG. And if that's weak, it's going to hurt all those RPG systems just as much as it hurts the actual gunplay itself. So we typically roll over from these videos into a members-only debrief. So if you're not a member, consider supporting the channel directly by clicking join. Five bucks a month gets you into all that extra content. If not, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.